everyone, welcome back to today's video. Um, so I know I told you I'll be back and stuff, but um, it's my son's spring break and it's Friday, so he goes back home tomorrow. So I was spending some time with him a little bit, so, and plus doing my Walmart shopper stuff got a little bit crazy. They were actually pretty busy today, or this, like, past this whole week, which is crazy. Um, and sorry for the poor lighting, my ring light decided to break. So, my husband is going to be building me light stuff. So, he's going to be getting on that as soon as possible because I kind of need some lighting. Um, that way my videos aren't too gloomy. And plus, it is raining. I think, and it snowed earlier. And then yesterday we had hail and lightning. And so, we've had all sorts of weather this week. I know some of the regions have experienced tornadoes and stuff like that. Luckily, we don't really experience that too much. We do get some tornadoes, but they're very, like, small and, like, not very long and stuff so not too concerning with that but so it is kind of darker out right now because it's raining currently but so I just wanted to can you guys I'm so I'm still trying to do some research about the iodine stuff it's a little bit hard to find some like set in stone information so I've been trying to watch some of Dr. Barry's videos just so I can give you guys some more information sorry there's a fuzzy um but I have been taking iodine for a little over a week now, and my coffee, just one droplet, plus the Keto Chow Daily Minerals also has it in there, but I only do a half of a serving. I don't do a full serving of that. Um, and I have found that I am actually warmer. I stay warmer. I know, like, at work, I was experiencing my office being, like, super hot, and um, now I can, like, either turn off the heater AC unit or I can turn it down and I notice that some people are like, oh it's kind of chilly in here and I'm like oh really oh I think it feels good so I think I'm noticing a difference but I think I need to obviously give it some more time um because sometimes depending on my hormones and how they want to act sometimes I'm hotter certain time of the month than I am the other times of the month so I'm going to give it some more time, but from what I found, the reason why we need to supplement iodine in certain regions of the world is because we're not close to the ocean. So if you live close to the ocean and you eat cows or other foods, fish and all that from the, like from those areas, the iodine from the ocean splashes onto the grass. Therefore the animals you eat are ingesting that. So that's why like coastal regions and stuff don't have an iron deficiency. And if you eat a lot of like wild caught fish or sardines, you don't need to supplement iodine necessarily as long as your body's functioning properly and you don't have like um, thyroid issues like Hashimoto's and stuff like that. But even still eating a lot of seafood will help with that so you do not have to take an iodine supplement on the carnivore lifestyle you can eat more seafood if you would like um i do find it harder for where i live to find wild caught seafood and i usually don't prefer frozen because it does have a slightly fishy taste which i can get past it doesn't really bother me but when i cook it it stinks it makes my house smell really bad and my husband does not like fishy flavor and he does not like when I cook fish at home but so so far so good with me supplementing iodine um and then every vertebrate every animal that has a that is classified as a vertebrate needs iodine to survive if we literally removed all the iodine out of your body you would die with in a matter of I would say days like it's like sodium when you remove salt from your body you're gonna die it's essential um, and iodine is not just associated with the thyroid every cell in your body needs iodine you actually have um, iodine uptakes in your cells that intake iodine and also when you intake iodine your cells um, export sodium and chloride and all that so like, it's a whole function that work together with all those and I thought that was very interesting um, so a lack of iodine actually leads to a lot of health problems, not just thyroid issues. And then you also need your thyroid, like iodine to make your thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. 
So T3s, you need three iodine molecules. T4, you need four iodine molecules. I'm going to go in more in detail because I saw a couple of videos about how it like, all works. And so I'm going to make a separate iodine video. I just need to do some more <laughs> research. Um, so every gland in your body needs iodine, like your pancreas, your mammary glands, and your sweat glands. And um, they, it's, they all concentrate iodine, especially your thyroid. So all your glands need iodine to function properly. And then, so the sodium iodine symporter is what that um, mechanism is called in all your cells. So it exports sodium molecules to intake that iodine molecule into your cell. Therefore, your cells can use it to, and your cells, like your thyroid uses it to create your T3 and T4 um, hormones. So it's pretty interesting. Um, there's 84 different tissues in your body that need iodine to function properly. So obviously it's very essential. So tissues like liver, pancreas, and all that stuff. Um, so the official, what they say to take, it, the bare minimum is 150 micrograms a day is how much you should intake, right? That's the minimum to keep you from being iron deficient, right? Um, pregnant and breastfeeding women need twice as much. And then 150 milli, uh, micrograms is just enough to make sure your thyroid is barely functioning properly. So you actually need more for all your other glands and tissues in your body to actually function properly. So Dr. Barry does recommend that you get one to three milligrams a day. I will put um, the Lugol iodine drops that I use down in the description below. So if you guys would like to purchase those, you can. Um, and I just do one drop, not one whole droplet full. It's literally one little drop out of the droplet um, that I take a day. Um, you can kind of see what makes you feel best at, you can add more if you like. I am good with just one droplet a day. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Now, your, your body's functioning properly. You are just going to urinate out the rest of the iodine your body doesn't need. Just like you urinate the rest of your sodium out that your body doesn't need. As long as you are healthy, right, your kidney function's healthy, your body's going to do what it's going to do that's necessary to eliminate that extra iodine. Because you have other cultures uh, like the... Um, Japanese and Chinese, they eat a lot of fish. Oh, they intake more than three milligrams per day of iodine and they are fine. They don't have, they're not, you know, have any iron deficiencies and they're not over iron deficient and have a lot of other problems. So you will urinate it out as long as your body's healthy and can do it. Um, so iodine also helps with cystic breast tissue. Um, so cysts form into cancerous cells in your body and a lot of women have experimented with iodine by adding it in and it has actually eliminated their cystic breast tissue along with or, um, ovarian cysts. Um, so for women with cystic breast tissue, uh, it, they should take three to five milligrams a day. So that would be three to five drops of iodine a day. Um, until those have gone away. Um, so yeah, so if you have normal kidney function, you can't really overdo iodine, um, but the, I would say the max for a normal person without any health issues such as the cystic breast, cysts and stuff like that, I would say a max of three milligrams per day, which would basically be three drops of iodine a day. Um, some people don't like the taste of the iodine drops. Um, I personally can smell the bottle up close to my nose and I'm like, it just smells like cleaning supply. Like it's not, it doesn't like bleach, but you know what I mean? Like the smell of bleach, it smells clean to me and I can put it right up to my nose. My husband opens the bottle from down here and he can smell it. He's like, oh my goodness. So he can taste it in his coffee even with one drop. I put one drop in my coffee, I can't tell the difference. Some people just take it in a shot glass and swig it and so you can get it over with. So I personally don't find an issue with it in my coffee. 
Um, so you can experiment if you like with that. Um, it's very helpful if you don't want to take an iodine supplement, eat more seafood that is wild caught. Um, like they, Dr. Barry says like three, if you eat sardines, eat like three cans a week or something like that to get your iodine in natural, if you want to do it via food. Um, I just don't eat that much seafood all the time and I kind of don't want to, and then I'm just like, I'm just going to supplement, it's fine. I don't mind it. it. The, the vial has a lot of servings in it and I bought two for like 15 bucks. And so I was like, it's fine. I don't, it's going to last me a while. I'm not worried about it. It wasn't like one of those expensive supplements, you know? So, so far I feel better on it, but it's all up to you guys to figure out if you guys like it or not. I just noticed I kind of blend with my chair today. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so iodine's a very interesting, um, element and mineral <laughs> for your body. And I am very looking forward to uh, doing some more research with that. Um, and then so far my class has been going really well. Um, my case study is going good. Like, so instead of writing one big paper at the end of our course, basically we're compiling each week. We have one assignment that would basically compile a big paper. So, uh, last week's paper was talking about how, um, like their culture. So I'm doing a native American, uh, woman, um, with type two diabetes. Cause they're one of the most, um, obese cultures in America along with they have the highest rate of type 2 diabetes as well so that's why I chose the Native American culture and so we had to talk about <clears throat> how their culture influences what they eat um, and then we had to talk about how economical status like low income and stuff like that also affects how we and they eat as well so that was actually a pretty fun paper to write about. Um, this next assignment is about, so next week's assignment, I haven't started it yet. Uh, we have to um, basically kind of create a meal plan based around similar, like what they would still be able to eat for their culture, right? So for my Native American patient, obviously I could go for carnivore, but you know, some people will go and agree with that. Yeah. So that's why I chose the keto diet because I, I feel that she can still maintain, um, healthy, wholer foods as a Native American and still participate in ceremonies and all the other stuff that they do and, um, still eat properly to an extent, uh, with eating keto because they do eat corn and beans and stuff like that. So, um, so that's my next assignment is to basically create a food plan. And I think a couple of, like, there's like three parts to it or something. So, so far it's going good. Discussions are going good. Um, I can't wait to talk more about all of my experience and how my feelings about getting a nutrition degree and letting you guys know what it all entails of getting a nutrition degree and yeah i can't wait to uh say my feelings out loud once i get my degree in my hand which will be my last class is my last day of class is may 28th so after that i can talk once i get my degree in my hand we'll talk because i'm i really want to tell you guys uh my opinion and how i feel but yeah so with that as well um, I don't know if some of you guys follow me on Instagram, um, but I did post something yesterday. Um, I understand that we're all, um, we, we all came from an uneducated world and now a lot of us as carnivores or as ketos, ketovores living this lifestyle have opened up and we are becoming more awake of the ridiculousness of how they are purposely making us sick and how they're collaborating with the food industry and medical industry to make us more sick. What I don't appreciate and like is when people judge me for the way I eat, but yet they are constantly eating garbage food. 
drinking sodas every day, eating high fructose corn syrup, eating overly processed foods, constantly eating sugar, eating candy. But yet, what I'm doing is horrible and people shouldn't listen to what I have to say or follow what I do. So, first of all, mind your own business. <laughs> Second of all, you've seen me chunky monkey. Some people that I'm talking about have seen me chunky monkey and see what kind of health that I was in prior to all of this. So obviously it's working and it works. And there's tens of thousands of cases that show that this works. Just because you don't agree with me or because we found it first, you don't wanna change your life now, doesn't mean you can fat talk what is happening. It works and it's frustrating because just because we change our lives and I work out and I, you know, like to show off that I, how far I've come in my pictures on Facebook and Instagram, I don't feel like you should have to be talking crap about me. Um, you do you and I'll do me and you might, my, my, like, don't come at me. And it's frustrating when they're close people and... I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to take and be able to bite my tongue without being rude because I really don't want to be that person, right? I don't want to be part of that group, right? I just, if you eat healthy whole foods, I'm proud of you. Like, that's changing in the right direction. You're doing something for you. You recognize. You're recognizing that your health is important. And you may not want to get rid of some foods. Fine. Like whatever but when you are bad mouthing it and then making other people bad mouth it that's what makes me mad because you know it works you see me you see me <laughs> uh i talk about how it's helped me i post other videos about how it helps other people like i've you know like and so it's it's just a little bit frustrating so if you don't have something nice to say about the way I'm eating, don't come at me unless you are eating good and not eating crap, if that makes sense. <laughs> so if you're still fat and chunky and out of shape and depressed and anxiety and constantly tired and hurting, don't come at me for the way you're eating and compared to the way I'm eating because of it's changed my life for the better. So watch self because I don't know how much more money will take with people being like that. Um, cause I don't like to be that mean person. I don't want to be that mean person. Cause I don't want people to even judge me even more now. Be like, oh my God, carnivore made her crazy. So I, I just needed to vent. And I was very, I think I was very polite about venting, but I don't know if I'm going to continue to be polite about it. Um, but yeah, so there's that. But anyways, I'm not going to be off of this thing. So it's been 18 minutes. Um, but yeah, so I'll keep doing some research on iodine. That way I can uh, get you guys some more information and more education on how that works as well. But yeah, so until next week, I will see you guys then. And like always, don't forget that like button. Check out that join button. Make sure you guys subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.